You're listening to the weekly Bible lesson from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, in the United States of America. This is the lesson sermon for Sunday, January 13, 2019. Subject, Sacrament. Golden Text, 1 Peter. Feed the flock of God which is among you, willingly, of a ready mind. Responsive reading is from Ezekiel. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, The flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. The Bible Deuteronomy Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments, alway. Micah Wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Matthew From that time Jesus began to preach, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. John, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Matthew And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. John Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. Matthew In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre, with fear and great joy, 
and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The substance of all devotion is the reflection and demonstration of divine love, healing sickness, and destroying sin. To keep the commandments of our Master and follow His example is our proper debt to Him and the only worthy evidence of our gratitude for all that He has done. Outward worship is not of itself sufficient to express loyal and heartfelt gratitude, since he has said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. To the ritualistic priest and hypocritical Pharisee, Jesus said, The publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Jesus' history made a new calendar, which we call the Christian era, but he established no ritualistic worship. He knew that men can be baptized, partake of the Eucharist, support the clergy, observe the Sabbath, make long prayers, and yet be sensual and sinful. The spiritual essence of blood is sacrifice. The efficacy of Jesus' spiritual offering is infinitely greater than can be expressed by our sense of human blood. The material blood of Jesus was no more efficacious to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the accursed tree than when it was flowing in his veins as he went daily about his father's business. His true flesh and blood were his life, and they truly eat his flesh and drink his blood who partake of that divine life. His consummate example was for the salvation of us all, but only through doing the works which he did and taught others to do. His purpose in healing was not alone to restore health, but to demonstrate his divine principle. He was inspired by God, by truth and love, in all that he said and did. Sheep Innocence Inoffensiveness Those who follow their leader Our Master cast out devils, evils, and healed the sick. It should be said of his followers also, that they cast fear and all evil out of themselves and others and heal the sick. The Passover, which Jesus ate with his disciples in the month Nisan, on the night before his crucifixion, was a mournful occasion, a sad supper taken at the close of day, 
in the twilight of a glorious career with shadows fast falling around. And this supper closed forever Jesus' ritualism or concessions to matter. His followers, sorrowful and silent, anticipating the hour of their master's betrayal, partook of the heavenly manna, which of old had fed in the wilderness the persecuted followers of truth. Their bread indeed came down from heaven. It was the great truth of spiritual being, healing the sick and casting out error. Their master had explained it all before, and now this bread was feeding and sustaining them. They had borne this bread from house to house, breaking, explaining it to others, and now it comforted themselves. For this truth of spiritual being, their master was about to suffer violence and drain to the dregs his cup of sorrow. He must leave them. With the great glory of an everlasting victory overshadowing him, he gave thanks and said, Drink ye all of it. When the human element in him struggled with the divine, our great teacher said, Not my will, but thine be done. That is, let not the flesh, but the spirit be represented in me. This is the new understanding of spiritual love. It gives all for Christ or truth. It blesses its enemies, heals the sick, casts out error, raises the dead from trespasses and sins, and preaches the gospel to the poor, the meek in heart. If all who ever partook of the sacrament had really commemorated the sufferings of Jesus and drunk of his cup, they would have revolutionized the world. If all who seek his commemoration through material symbols will take up the cross, heal the sick, cast out evils, and preach Christ or truth to the poor, the receptive thought, they will bring in the millennium. Through all the disciples experienced, they became more spiritual and understood better what the Master had taught. His resurrection was also their resurrection. It helped them to raise themselves and others from spiritual dullness and blind belief in God into the perception of infinite possibilities. What a contrast between our Lord's Last Supper and his last spiritual breakfast with his disciples in the bright morning hours at the joyful meeting on the shore of the Galilean Sea. His gloom had passed into glory, and his disciples' grief into repentance, hearts chastened and pride rebuked. Convinced of the fruitlessness of their toil in the dark and wakened by their master's voice, they changed their methods, turned away from material things, and cast their net on the right side. Discerning Christ, truth, anew on the shore of time, they were enabled to rise somewhat from mortal sensuousness, or the burial of mind in matter, into the newness of life as spirit. This spiritual meeting with our Lord 
in the dawn of a new light is the morning meal which Christian scientists commemorate. They bow before Christ's truth to receive more of his reappearing and silently to commune with the divine principle love. Our baptism is a purification from all error. Our Eucharist is spiritual communion with the one God. Our bread, which cometh down from heaven, is truth. Our cup is the cross. Our wine, the inspiration of love. The draft our master drank and commended to his followers. It is the living Christ, the practical truth, which makes Jesus the resurrection and the life to all who follow him indeed. Obeying his precious precepts, following his demonstration so far as we apprehend it, we drink of his cup, partake of his bread, are baptized with his purity, and at last we shall rest, sit down with him in a full understanding of the divine principle which triumphs over death. I will now read the three daily duties from the Church Manual provided by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me, and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind, and govern them. A rule for motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to Duty it shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged and justified or condemned. This Bible lesson is prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.